Hey everybody, how are you doing? I just want to uh, share a dream I had that I do believe it's meaningful in the Lord. Um, it's about a boat and the storms, very bad storms. It was a little bit of a bad dream, like a nightmare. I was scared, but not horribly overwhelmed with complete fear. Um, it started off, I was in the boat with a brother in the Lord, a friend, somebody I know, and they were showing me and my husband around the boat, like as if they knew the boat. They knew how to operate the boat. They knew where things were. Um, I wasn't taking a lot of notes, mental notes on this because they were just kind of displaying things, what they knew about the boat. You know, we know, I know this, and this is what you do for this, and this is how you do this. And so, yeah, we were on the boat together. Um, it was a fairly big boat. There was a lower deck area and an upper deck area, but not huge. I would say, like, the lower deck might have been about the size of my living room, an average living room. Um maybe a little bit longer with a, you know, low ceiling because we are in a boat and it was a little bit dark down there. But, uh, yeah, I was being shown around the boat and then this person decided they, they just disappeared. They were gone. And the way I felt was concerned because they're gone and they're the ones that seem to know how to function on this boat. And my husband and I, we don't have any clue. We don't know what we're doing. So yeah, I was more than concerned to say the least. Um, my concern started to turn into a little bit of fear and worry as I realized these torrential storms were approaching and everything turned was dark outside. I don't remember what it looked like outside before, but there was a window and I looked out the window and I'm in the lower deck. And when I looked out the window, it was dark. The waters were like black and the waves that were coming were quite high that they, as they approached the boat, they went higher than the boat and they were hitting with quite a force. And my concern turned into deep worry because I'm looking at the storm and I'm afraid. <laughs> And it's strange because there was a window I could peer out, um, even though I was in this lower deck and the window could be opened and there was a screen on the window. So as I put my face to the screen to look out and the wave was coming, it smashed against the boat with such force that it knocked the window to me and I could feel like the force, like it was being like a whack in the face and the wind was completely knocked out of me. Um, so anyways, that was that. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm in the bottom of the boat again with my husband. I'm no longer looking out the window and I realize that this boat is moving at serious high speeds. Like, in my dream, I thought that it was from the storm, the wind from the storm that was carrying the boat because nobody was really operating the boat. So it was being carried by the wind. But what I realized was we weren't moving in the direction that the wind was blowing. The wind came towards the side, the storm, the waves came toward the side of the boat and the boat is moving in like like a letter T the boats moving it as like the top of the T and the winds are coming this way the storm winds like they're coming like towards my face and the boats going in a straight line this way the boat is not like wavering it's not making any sharp turns or angles it's just going in a straight line and it's like being high speed on the highway and when i realize how fast we're going is because all of a sudden we're passing other boats and they seem to have these like um like pipes or whatever like steamboats do like two or three 
Um, I don't know why they look like that and if that mattered or not. But anyways, we are just passing these boats like vroom, 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 like crazy. And I'm thinking, what if we run into a boat? What if we smash into a boat? Like, I have no control of this boat. I can't slow it down. I can't waver it around any objects if we're approaching them. I just have to trust where the wind is taking this boat and I have no choice. And so I just rested in that, you know, I'm just going to wait this out and see what happens and, and just go and crawl up by my husband and, you know, hope for the best. And I woke, when I woke up, I was thinking, you know, um, what does all this mean? I felt like it meant something from God. And, and I did get a couple of things immediately that came to heart. And over time, um, I'll just go over it quickly. And then I have some notes that I want to look at. But first of all, um, I realized that the boat was my safe place, but not a place that I was in control of. And I remembered that the ark, Noah's ark, was the place of salvation for when the flood was going to come and the door was open and anybody could come onto the ark they were invited to come onto the ark but only no one his family went on the ark and when the flood came judgment came the only place that was a place of security was the ark and i realized that that boat was christ because the bible talks about the ark being a type of salvation, a Christ-like salvation. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. And then also I realized um, when I was looking out the window, oh, and at the beginning, sorry, back, I have to backtrack a little. Uh, this person that was with us that just kind of abandoned ship and then left us to go through the storms, um, I'm not saying that it represents this person in particular that was in my dream, but what I realized as is my husband and I, because of our health problems, I'm his primary caregiver. He has a disability and he's been getting sick a lot. And I also have chronic pain and I struggle every day with this pain because of a, a degenerative um, a disc disease in my back and herniated disc, which costs cause sciatic nerve pain daily chronically um and so it's you know you can imagine every day is a struggle and we all have those in our lives we have those things that you know we fight through every day especially in the lord um that we have to get through and, and muster up the strength to get through some people it's not an everyday struggle but in this case it, it's for us been uh over 25 years of struggles with these things. So, and, and as we've gotten older, it's gotten more difficult, more challenging. My husband now has epilepsy and seizures and he gets chronic bladder and urinary tract infections. And, you know, he gets a fever and this is what we've been going through this week. And it just makes him confused and really bad. And it just, it's difficult. It's, it's tiring. It's emotional. So anyways, that being said, um, that's our problem. That's our trial. And so when the person left the boat, I felt like that was much like the way our life has been. Um, I'm not saying that people have purposely abandoned us, but being in this situation has kind of put us in like a COVID lockdown, you know, but it's been a long time for us and it's, it's, made it more difficult to get to church where we used to go every you know Sunday and as many services as we could at one time I went three days a week it's gotten to where now we go as a visitor once in a while and um because my life's been so you know occupied with the struggles and dealing with just coping with what we're dealing with survival mode you really don't get the time for a social life and so you find yourself secluded and isolated from loved ones and from the things that you used to enjoy. It's hard to find pleasure in those things when you're in pain, you know. So I don't go out very often. And in so doing, I realize that 
maybe there might have been people that could have helped us out in certain situations and I'm not saying that there hasn't been help there we God has provided emergency help every now and again when we really needed it when I've cried out you know but um for the most part we we're going through the struggle alone we're going through the storms alone and I realized that kind of could represent that that there might be people the person might have been able to do some things and maneuver the boat and help but they left and we were left alone in the boat and so because the boat is being in Christ though we can put our trust in the Lord and that safety and that shelter so when I looked out the window and I know there's not gonna be a normal life a screen window in a boat but um when I looked out and that storm, that wind, that wave came to the boat, the water, it was funny because no water got into the boat. I didn't even, my face didn't even get wet. And it was a giant wave that literally forcefully hit up against the side of the boat. But what I did feel was the impact. I felt like it hit me with such impact and it took my breath away. And... What I realized was that storm is the trials and tribulations of life. And I put my eye on the storm, which whenever we seem to go through these things, like we have our everyday struggle, but if there's something that elevates that and makes it more difficult, yeah, we tend to sometimes look at that and for a moment get worried. And so that's what I was doing. That's where I, I, what I need to learn from. I, I need to not look to that, not feel the worry, um, the fear, not to focus on those things. Um, I always know that God's going to help us, but it's just the fear of dealing with it, of feeling it. It's, it hurts. It's painful. It's tiring. It's exhausting. And it's, it's, yeah, it's challenging. And so sometimes, yeah, I'm looking at the storm and I get overwhelmed. And I tend to do that a lot, like when these new things come, but I quickly pull myself out of it and put my heart and mind back where it should be. And that's on the Lord. Um, so I realized too, a wind, it's funny because I feel the storm is the trials and tribulations of life. But what I felt was a wind that had like, an impact and it took my breath away and ironically when you look up the word spirit in the bible um sorry in in the concordance in the biblical concordance and biblical dictionaries it literally means a wind or a breath and we understand what type of a spirit it is with other words that are put beside that um like, for instance, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God. Well, we understand that, you know, he's a spirit. You can't see a spirit. It's a wind, a breath, like God gave us his spirit, his breath of life into human beings when he made us. And that's how we became alive. He gave us life through that. There's evil spirits, spirit of fear, the human spirit. So it's um, the descriptive word that you understand what the spirit is, but the word spirit alone just means wind or breath. And so that was interesting because what caught through was not necessarily the water. And I wasn't overcome by the, by the uh, storm itself, but what got in was that wind that was behind the storm. And it took my breath away for a moment. Um, but it didn't overcome me. It didn't kill me. And I still remained in the boat. The boat wasn't tossed to and fro at all. It was sturdy. Um, it was just the impact of the wind that I felt. And I feel like that is those demonic spiritual attacks that we get that sometimes are allowed to bring those trials in our lives to help us grow and learn in the Lord. And yeah, so... As far as after that, where all of a sudden I'm just being, the boat is being taken on this straight path, literally narrow path, very straight. It didn't 
go around. It didn't maneuver. It just kept going straight. And I was assuming when I first woke up that it was being taken by the storm. But like I said, the storm was coming at us in a different direction. This wind that was carrying the boat was going like, it, say, east to west. And the storm was coming from north to south kind of thing. Um, as an example, anyways. And we're just like on the highway with this wind. It is going high speed. And we're passing by these other boats. And what I feel those other boats might have been was, um, well, I was worried that concerned, more concerned. I wasn't stricken with too much fear, but that concern and a little bit of gnawing, you know, worry, we could crash into something, but our boat stayed on that narrow path and all the other boats that I saw, they were more out to sea a little bit, like maybe 20 feet away. And another one might have been 15, another one might have been 30, like, and we just kept passing them, zoom, zoom, zoom. And I realized I, did, I never knew what was going to be up ahead if we would ever crash into a boat that was on the same latitude longitude whatever as we were but what i realized was every boat we passed it was beside us on the other side and i realized they were all over in different parts of the water like i said 20 feet 15 feet maybe 40 feet away and we were just on one small path and the bible says that broad is the path that leads to destruction and narrow is the path that the Christian walks that leads to eternal life. And I realized, though, even though we were in the water, that was just a straight and narrow path. And all the other boats we were passing, that represents the world, the broad path that everybody else is taking that doesn't enter into, the, into, into Christ, doesn't enter in with Christ, doesn't enter in the ark. And so, yeah, we were just passing them by at high speeds and never crashing into them. God, they were never in our way. Um, I woke up. I never saw what the end result of that was, but I don't think that's what God intended for me to see. He wanted me to understand the journey and to be strengthened by the message of the journey, um, to not look out of the window don't look at the storms. Don't even start worrying ahead of time about the storms because if you start giving those things room in your mind, then you have you will have an open window and that wind, that demonic spirit will come in and take your breath away for a moment. It didn't overcome me because I'm I am a child of God. I do have faith, so it didn't overcome me, but yeah, it took my breath away for a moment. So anyways, there's a few things that I just wanted to read to give context to all this. And I just got to grab my other phone, my husband's phone, because I got some of the stuff on there. Okay, so Noah's Ark, like I said, it is a, a type of Christ. And the Bible says that in the last days before the coming of the Lord, you know, there's going to be judgment in that on the earth and God is going to keep his children secure and, and safe during these end time tribulations. Um, but we will go through some things. We will go through persecutions and hard times. And so the Bible says, um, when the Lord comes, it will be like the days of Noah, that people will just be carrying on doing their own thing, you know, eating, drinking, getting married, being distracted. And while Noah's building the ark, nobody's responding. Nobody's coming. Um, and there's some parallels, like we must choose to enter. We must choose to enter the ark. It's not something we're forced to do. It's an invitation. And so in order to get on the boat, it's up to us. And when the time comes, there will be a time when it will be too late. The day of grace will be over, just like the opportunity to get on the ark. There was that time. And Noah and his family were the only ones that entered the ark. And the Bible says that God himself closed the door to the ark. It wasn't Noah. 
So just as we're in, in these days, we're living in the day of grace to receive salvation as a free gift from Christ. There will be one day when that door will be closed by God and then the judgment comes. Um, God is in control of the ark. You know, he was in control of how long the, the storm, the flood waters lasted. And Noah had to put his faith in God. And God was also in control of when the time to exit the ark and go to the new world. The uh, God destroyed the old world and all the evil that um, was upon it. And he started a, a new world for Noah and um, it's going to be like that when Jesus comes, he's going to bring his kingdom to this earth and it will be new. It will be a peaceful place of no more tears, no more suffering. So when it's time to enter that dispensation of the godly kingdom on earth, right now we're in Christ through the, you know, being baptized into Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, but then there will be this time where there will be God's kingdom will rule from Jerusalem. Um, it also says in 1 Peter 3.20 that the ark is a type of baptism and cleansing of sin. It's like a prototype of, of what would come, what would be coming through Christ in the, through the New Testament, the new covenant of Jesus. So, I'm just going to read that and just bear with me while I look that up. Peter 3.20. I'm not going to read uh, all of it. And this is uh, the uh, New Testament. And it's referring to how things are a type. How the uh, Old Testament flood days were a type of salvation like Christ. So it says who formerly were disobedient, so the people back then that were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, so God is long-suffering, that, that is the fruit of the Spirit. He waited and waited upon these people to repent, to turn to him. Um, so while God waited in, when once the long-suffering of, of God waited in the days of Noah, while well, the ark was being prepared, by which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water, the like figure onto which even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it, it, it shows us here that the souls that entered the ark, it's a like figure onto baptism, which also does save us. It represents when we are baptized and washed of our sins through Christ Jesus. You see, we repent from our sins and we get forgiveness but water baptism is a complete cleansing, like we're starting new again. That's why you'll hear Christians say we're born again. We're literally born and made new, cleansed without sin. And God cleansed the earth with the flood and started new. Um, okay, so that's that. Now let me get to my next point. The window. When I looked out the window, I did explain to you um, a little bit about that. So... Yeah, don't look or focus of, on the storms of life, the tribulations and the trials. If you do, it opens a window. And even though you're safe and secure in the ark, when you, when you fall, when you focus, you know, on things that are lacking in faith, when you look at the trial over over the victory, you know, over your victory or just holding on to Christ and waiting patiently. Um, sometimes those are the things that allow the devil to take advantage of you in your vulnerable state. So 
yeah, like I said, the wind, I believe, represents the demonic spirits that came in and took my breath away. Um, and I was saying the spirit means pneuma, it's Greek, wind or breath. In a human, the spirit is the vital principle by which the body is animated. The spirit is that which animates and gives life. The body is of no profit, for the spirit imparts life to it, not the body in turn to the spirit. The Bible refers to the human spirit coming from the breath of God. It also speaks of evil or unclean spirits. So even though it's a wind or a breath and it's unseen, it gives animation, personality, um, and evil being demonic spirit. And of course, the Holy Spirit, that is God's spirit or the spirit of Christ, which dwells in those that believe. The Bible says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the washing or remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift, the promise of the Holy Ghost. The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Um, and Second Timothy says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And then I just have to also turn to Matthew. Oh, this was another thing it reminded me of. Um, there's a story in the Bible about Jesus being in a boat and he walks on the water and a storm is is there and approaching. So um Matthew 14 22. Just bear with me for one moment, please. Okay, it says here, and immediately Jesus made his disciples get into a boat or a ship and to go before him onto the other side. Well, he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves from the wind, was, con was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went onto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And there's another version that's more accurate. It says, It is I am. And I am. Then Jesus is calling himself the I am, which is what God told Moses who he was. I am that I am. So every Jew knows if someone declares to be I am, they are declaring themselves to be God Almighty in flesh. And he said, come. And Peter came down out of the ship and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So what I like about this is it reminds me of me when I was looking out the window at the tempest, at the waves, at the tribulations, at the problem. The wind came. I, I, you know, I didn't stay secured in the ship and just keep my mind completely only on my faith in Christ. I looked at that storm and when it came, even though it didn't knock over the ship, even though it didn't flood the ship, the wind from it came, not the water, the wind, the spirit, the breath, and it hit me with force and took my breath away, but only for a moment. I was 
kept safe and secure in the boat. And just like Peter, he looked at the storm. He took his eyes off the Lord for that moment and he began to sink. But Jesus didn't let him drowned and become overcome by the storm but he pulled reached out his hand and pulled him up and just said you have little faith he just gave him a little a little chastisement you know you have little faith so these are the ways we learn to increase our faith and put more trust in the one that can save us you know th this is part of life as a christian it's part of life even not as a christian because God desires us all to come to him. So he allows us to go through these things to learn from them and increase our faith and look to him and to be able to free fall in his arms and not to have to look around to see, is anybody there to catch me? Am I safe? And so, yeah, that was another example of what I felt like my dream was saying. So I just want to encourage you all to stay on the boat, stay in Christ, don't put your mind on the trials and the problems and the distractions of life around you. Because when you do, we open that window. And even though there's a screen there, and even though the storm won't take you down, you will get the wind knocked out of you. Mark my words. But Christ will revive you if you keep your faith and he'll keep you safe and secure. And from each moment, I believe will grow stronger, but I think God just wants us to endure, endure the storm. You know, we all pray, God, take this problem away. I'm always praying that prayer. I probably still will pray that prayer, but in the meantime, I still, I pray another prayer. God, help me to endure the storm. Help me to be like you. Give me strength. Give me wisdom. Give me the heart and mind of Christ. Help me to grow from this. Perfect me through it. You know, of course, we don't want to suffer. We don't want to be in pain. We don't want any problems. We we like comfort, don't we all? But yeah, we have to go through these things to become perfected in Christ, um, to, to grow in the spirit, for the fruit of the spirit to bloom in us. And so I just want to encourage you to stay in the boat. And if you're not in the boat, well, get in the boat, get in the ark, because the floods are coming, people get into where it's safe and secure even if you feel a little bit worried feeling those torrential storms hitting the boat get in get in hop aboard please i love you in jesus name i pray for your safety for your security for your growth and for blessings in the name of our lord jesus christ amen